Welcome to PXF Time Merge. So here I have a clip of falling snow. Let's have a look. And you may be familiar with the new node called Time Echo. So if I look here, I've set a Time Echo to look at five frames. And right now Time Echo is maxing the current frame and the four previous frames together for a total of five frames. And it's maxing them together. That's fine, but the amount of blend modes is very limited. We only have a choice of max plus an average, and we can only look backwards. So we can only pick frames from the past, not frames from the future. So this is very limited. We also don't have a mask input or a mix knob. So time merge tries to fix those shortcomings. So let's bring in a time merge. Here we go. So now if I connect it to the same clip, I have something very similar, but instead of looking at four frames in the past, we're looking at two frames in the past and two frames in the future. We can change that with the offset control here. So if I set it to start, then we're going to have minus four frames plus the current frame. So that's five frames total. If I set it to end, then we have the current frame and four frames in the future. So now we're still having five frames, but from the current frame to the future, and if we set it to centered, then we have the current frame, two frames before and two frames after. If you need to blend more frames together, of course, you can choose how many frames you want here with frames to look at. So if I set that to, let's say 15 frames, it takes a second to buffer. And now I'm blending 15 frames together. So I'm, I've got the current frame, seven frames in the past, and seven frames in the future. Let's have a look with a different clip here. So I I have a a guy jumping off a table here that's pre-keyed and it's got an alpha channel and it's ready to be comped on top of my background here. So that's pretty good. I want to create a time trail effect. So I'm gonna apply a time merge on my guy. So go back to the PXF menu. PXF time merge and I'm going to connect the image input to my dude here put my viewer on it and you can see already you can see a trail going on so right now I'm maxing five frames together if I add more frames here then I'm going to create a longer trail so you can see they're all mushed together that's because they're all maxed together and they're not very far apart because this is a slow-mo clip. The guy is not moving that quickly. So the difference between one frame to the other is not that much. So what I need to do is first, I want them to be on top of each other instead of maxing together. So I'm gonna switch the operation here uh, from max to over. So now all the copies of the guy are on top of each other instead of being maxed together. And I think one frame apart is too little. I need more time between the copies. So if I set a frame skip, for example, of 10 frames, then all the dudes will be 10 frames apart. So now I have 15 copies of my jumper here and they're all 10 frames apart. If I turn off my time merge, the current frame is here in the middle and then the uh, plus 10 frame is on top and plus uh, minus 10 is on top, plus 20, etc. Let's uh, have a look here. If we go back to one frame, that's just the current frame. If we set it to two frames, then I get uh, 10 frames in the future, and then 10 frames in the past, and then uh, 20 in the future, 20 in the past, 30 in the future, 30 in the past, and so on. I keep adding copies on top of everything. So that's cool, but that's not really one I want I want the current frame to be on top so I can switch the operation here to under and now the order is reversed so if we go back to one now the plus 10 frame is under the current frame and then minus 10 is underneath and so on and so on so as I add frames they're all being put underneath everything else instead of on top of everything else so that would be the under mode of course I can choose other modes I can max them, so all the uh, guys are maxed together. I could uh, min them, I could plus them, so now all the guys are added on top of each other. 
I could uh, subtract them from each other, divide them from each other, and multiply them together. So in our case, we want under. That's probably the best mode here. And right now I've got the current frame that's on top and all the previous frames are underneath and all the future frames are underneath as well. If I just want previous or future, then I would adjust my offset. So if I set the offset to start, then I have only previous frames. If I set my, uh, my offset to end, then I only have my future frames underneath. So for this, I think it makes more sense to use a start offset. So now I've got this trail of uh, jumpers all 10 frames apart. Maybe it's a little bit crowded. Let's put them 20 frames apart. Here we go. That's a little bit better. We can of course use the mix knob. So if you want the trail to be less present, you can use the mix knob to mix back to the original non time merge frame. So you can blend them that way. And you can of course use the mask knob. So if you need to only have the time merge in some area of the frame, you can of course mask it with some alpha channel, for example, a roto. And now my time merge only is visible inside the mask. All right, so let's try that in context. Let's see how it looks. So that looks pretty cool. I like it. So that's it. That's our overview of PXF time merge. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.